Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews and this is a review I know a lot of people will have been pestering me saying are you going to review, are you going to review this product, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you? and yes of course I am because it is indeed, it's a ball, it's a cardigan, no it's the Hobby King Pulse Jet. But before I review the Pulse Jet or even open the box I have to put my fluoro jacket on because according to some of the experts out there these things are so dangerous, they use high explosive fuel and and you, basically you can kill a million babies just by looking at them. They're really, oh, it's terrible. Well, that, what a load of rubbish that is. Here we go, here is the Pulse Jet. I love the retro packaging, it's actually really good. Because Pulse Jets come from the, you know, the, they were quite popular in the 50s and 60s in the hobby scene, especially in America. Because they were a jet engine and they were relatively cheap. Now, this looks to be a copy of the good old Dynajet. That's a, an engine that was very popular in that period of time, manufactured for years, and now it's become a bit of a collector's item, although I suspect that having this up here on the market is going to suddenly uh, knock the wind out of the sails of those eBay auctions I've seen recently where people are trying to sell real genuine Dynajets for 300 bucks US. This is 100 bucks, under 100 bucks. So yeah, I think they're dreaming. Collectors will still collect the genu genuine one, but if you want a Pulse Jet, then hey, 100 bucks, that's got to be pretty good, providing it stacks up, of course. And we all know that sometimes Chinese manufacture isn't the best quality control, sometimes a bit lacking, so let's have a look in the box and see what you get for your money. Now I don't usually do unboxings because they're just a boring waste of everyone's time, but in this case I wanted to show you how it was packed, because actually the packing is really damn good. I'm actually quite impressed. Look, if you look in here, here we go, we've got the Pulse Jet engine, there's this foam to keep it centred in the box, it's wrapped in bubble wrap, there were some, some of these big, um, you know, the big air bags on top of it. That's really good packaging. That's Excellent, I've seen a lot worse packaging for products that cost a lot more money than this, so in terms of packaging, that's got to be a big thumbs up. So once you've got everything out of the box, this is what you get, here's your engine. There's your engine, I mean, to be honest, it's pretty bodge, I'm not kidding, it's heavy and the welding is really, really bad on this. You know, I mean, the original Dynajets, they pressed the two halves between, in a press, and left a little ridge along the edge that they, they welded, they fusion welded a little seam on each side and it was actually really good, but this, Meh, I mean it's, uh, yeah, I've got to say, it, actually it, it, the profile is really bad, it's nowhere near as good as I was hoping, I was really hoping this would be a lovely, you know, good quality copy of the Dynajet, but uh, it's a hundred bucks, it's a hundred bucks, it'll probably run, but I mean the original Dynajet produced about four pounds of thrust, I can't see this producing quite so much, it's really, it's just, Pulse Jets are quite sensitive to all the dimensions and the dimensions on this are, way out in, in key areas, they're very oval, you know, not round, the, the actual um, parts of the tube here is decidedly oval and that's not good because to get the best results you need to have a circular tube, it has to be a circular cross section where it's oval and you know, all sorts of strange things start happening, not good. Now of course look at this warning, danger, danger, Woo, you know, woo, careful Will Robinson, everything's covered in stickers, obviously one of the problems with Pulse Jets if you're selling them commercially is some idiot will hurt themselves because they get really hot and they have, it's not explosive fuel, it's, it's gasoline, it's petrol. I mean, you put it in your car, so what's the problem with using it in an engine? You put it in your gas plane. So those people I saw saying, oh, these use high explosive fuel, well, wake up. You can run them on nitromethane and methanol like model two-stroke engine, uh, model glow plug engine fuel, um, and you will get more power on methanol. But for most people, Petrol, gasoline, it's just fine. So yeah, look at all the warning stickers. These are worth the money on their own. Look at it, brilliant, lovely, big warning stickers. Here's the ignition system. Now this is a bonus, because a lot of the time, ignition systems are, you know, bodged together. The old Dynajet used to use a Model T trembler coil and, you know, it was pretty erratic sometimes. The fact that they've got a dedicated ignition system with some lovely silicon leads and clips and a place even probably to put your lipo in here. It's really good. There's top marks for that. I'll pull this apart in a moment. We'll have a look at what's inside, see if it's actually going to work, if it's going to last. And if, as it says on the front, it could kill you to death and any baby you were holding at the time. Right, we also get some instructions. Now there's a novelty. A lot of stuff doesn't come with instructions these days. You say go online and read the manual. Um, although this seems to be solely for the ignition system. What does it say? Let's have a look. Oh, it's, um, no, there is a separate manual for the Hobby King Pulse Jet. Brilliant. So, I'll have a browse through that, and we have some more comments on that. Then there's a little bag of accessories. Now this seems to have, what's it got in here? It's got a spare reed valve, I would hope. It's got screws and nuts and bolts and bits of, uh, goodness knows what, I'll have to have a close look. It looks like there's plenty of mounting accessories anyway, and that's always good. A spare spark plug. To be honest, you'll never need to change the spark plug. Spark plugs last forever. Certainly last longer than the engine itself in this case. Um, 
So yeah, that's basically what comes in the box. Let's take a closer look at some of this stuff. Okay, let's take a look at some of this welding. Um, as I say, it's pretty bodge. You can see the amount of grounding, that, grinding that's gone on here. And some of these bits here like that, you know, it's, even though they've ground it back, there's still inclusions there. You know, it looks, um, it's not, not what I'd call quality welding. Um, again there, I mean, this stuff is pretty basic. It's just TIG welding. You think that they would have done a better job than that. And, and the fact they've had to do so much grinding and there's so much of this crap here, Meh. They should have put a sacrificial edge on here as the dining jet did and just ground it down a bit. It doesn't matter if it's got little wings out the side, that's not going to change anything, but it does make it a dam site better. And look at look how much <laughs> sort of dimpling and bending bending's going on there because of all the, the bodging that's happened. That's that's really bad, I've got to say. It's really bad. But it's $99, gotta say, $99. Now here's a view down the throat of the pulse jet. As you can see, um, up the front here, I wonder if I can get my finger in. If it'll focus on my finger, come on, focus, focus. No, it's not going to. Oh, yeah, there we nearly did. You can see the front bit here is actually quite oval to try and get it to focus again. Come on. Oh, it's quite oval here. It's not round. It's an oval. That's really, really bad. That's not the way it should be looking. It should be looking circular all the way through. That's terrible. You can see there probably better that it's, it's quite oval in the, at the start of the tailpipe there. Ah, not really good, because if you look at it from the side here, let's get a bit of better angle, you can see it goes from being parallel to being quite sort of nipped in at the neck here. That's, yeah, that's not good, that's not good. Um, it'll affect the running quite most certainly. It'll still probably run, but you're not going to get the full potential out of the engine. Okay, I'll give them points because they have back purged the weld. So it is a, what that means is they put some gas inside the engine when they've welded it so it doesn't get all black and horrible inside because otherwise the, the stainless steel tends to oxidise very quickly and you get things called danglers and carbonisation. And so yeah, that, that's actually not too bad. If you look at it, the weld, oh, that's bad. They've actually burnt through there and then had to fill it up with extra weld. I mean, yeah, they've obviously had kids welding these things together, not craftsmen. Now, by comparison, of course, the, the, the actual... Um, head in the valving is excellent. It's obviously been CNC machined and anodized and I can find no fault with that. That's really nicely done. It's, you know, it's a nice piece of engineering. It's um, obviously, you know, when you get machines involved, things happen far more accurately and consistently. So yeah, no, that's a nice little valve head. No problems with that at all. And of course, one question everyone will want to know is how much does it weigh? Because that's an important factor. Well, there we go, 428 grams without the fuel metering jets on the front. They're gonna be another 15 grams. So, yeah, you're looking at under 450 grams. It's under a pound, not too far removed from the original Dynagy. Right, let's get technical. Let's put this ignition system on the bench and see how well that's made. Okay, we'll remove the, the cutesy little label that warns us we've got to read the instructions or we will die. I'm gonna keep these labels. They should sell these. I love them, great big fat warning labels. Beautiful, look at this. Oh. Gorgeous, and I love this, look at this, this is just crazy. It's got the special safety flip up thingy here, look you can't operate the powerful ignition switch without first of all lifting the launch button. <laughs> My goodness, I mean it's fair enough actually because these do put out some high voltage and if anyone is susceptible to, you know if you've got a pacemaker or you're a bit dodgy heart or you're you know, just a bit of a girl, then the shock that comes out of these could actually cause you quite a bit of grief, so hey, it's um, it's a sensible move on the part of Hobby King and probably limiting their legal liabilities to make sure that they advise everyone. Now, why, isn't, why aren't these screws coming out? Well, there you go. Because I'm old and stupid, I tried to use a Phillips screwdriver to undo an Allen key or a hex head. I mean, duh, who's the stupid one now? It's me. Um, but to be fair, I'm actually trying to do this while looking at the camera so that I can uh, make sure everything's in shot, and that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. So here we go. Now we can get the, the lid off this little baby. Don't try and use a Phillips screwdriver on a Allen key screw. It's not going to work, no matter how hard you try. Let's have a look. These are just screwed into plastic. There's no metal posts in here, as sometimes found on. Oh, I better get my microphone in the right place. Metal posts, as is sometimes found on better gear, or better gear made to a higher budget I should say, because I mean I, this, this is only an ignition system for a pulse jet. It doesn't have to be built like a Rolls Royce, but I must say I'm quite happy with the plastic. The plastic looks really good. And of course it insulates the whole thing so you're not going to accidentally electrocute yourself. You have to do it on purpose. Here we go. Well, it's, um, there's not a lot to see in here really is there? Look at this. We've got obviously a little module here that does the high voltage stuff. We've got a little switch, a fancy switch. 
a little connector to connect the switch to the module and that's about it all right see look, let's take the screw off here and see what we find underneath who knows what's in here remember children don't try this at home there are lots of highly explosive parts in here and you could kill your neighbor's baby of course i'm being facetious but it is worth re reminding you that yes, you can get a nasty shock from this stuff. You can even kill yourself. If this is a CDI unit, which it may well be. Oh no, here we go, look at this. Ooh, it's all potted. There's the guts. Let me just zoom in on this for you so you can have a closer look at it. It's rather interesting, really. Oops, gotta get this on the camera. Here we go, here's the guts. This is the little transformer that steps the voltage up from the voltage of your LiPo pack to the spark you want. Here's a little, what have we got in here? A little, oh, it's got a little relay, I think, a little buzzer. So it's actually, is it? What is it? Looks like it could be very similar to the old original ones because it's got a little, perhaps that relay is used to vibrate. Why would they have this transistor then? I don't know. This is um, another transistor in there. Hmm, maybe that's just a choke. I'm not sure. It's hard to tell. It may just be a choke to stop RF noise. <laughs> it's, it's kind of pointless doing that. But the whole thing's potted. If it blows up, you're not going to fix it. Um, so take care of it. I suspect it should be built to withstand the many things such as perhaps having these leads accidentally shorted together or having them so far apart you don't get any spark jumping. That can cause some problems with units like this because the voltages on here can rise to very high levels, cause breakdown of the installation. If you short it out, it can cause excessive current in here, can blow bits up. We'll see whether it lasts during the testing. So there we go, the, the electronics looks pretty good, looks pretty reasonable, um, I'll give it a good thrashing, we'll see if it works, because that's the bottom line, isn't it? Does it work? Um, I, yeah, actually, to be honest, I've seen much worse ignition systems sold for much more money for Pulse Jet, so just for this box alone, it's probably worth the $95, or 100 bucks, whatever they charge for the Pulse Jet. Nice little box, and as I say, we'll follow up on how well that works. So there you go, I survived opening the box and, and looking at the Pulse Jet, despite the dire warnings of the evil things that will happen with these engines, and that, uh, you know, how they're gonna be the end of humanity as we know it, but yeah, the reality is that Pulse Jets are, actually, if they're used properly, used sensibly, they're very safe. They're actually safer than turbines. There are no pieces inside spinning around at 130,000 RPM just waiting to explode and fire shrapnel all over the place. Um, they're simple, they're a tube with some valves and a valve head and some fuel metering. That's all they are. When a pulse jet stops, it just stops. It doesn't send bits out in all directions, it just stops. If there's a failure of some kind, it's normally the red valve, which means basically the engine no longer seals and it just stops. And if it stops running, it stops sucking fuel. And if it's not sucking fuel, there's nothing to burn, so there's no big flames to be seen. It's really an amazingly safe little engine. And if you've got it on a model and it stops, then the metal is so thin, we're talking half a millimeter thick, it's so thin that by the time the engine reaches the ground, it's cooled down, it's not gonna set fire to anything. By comparison, turbines are an immense fire risk. You know, you, you're flying around a turbine and if, if something happens and the, and the flame goes out and then raw fuel floods into the motor, you get flames streaming out the back as you've seen. If you go to my XJet channel, there's videos of, the, uh, of an A10 Warthog where both engines ended up failing and there were flames pouring out the back, could have been really nasty. Plenty of other videos on YouTube showing turbines crashing, massive balls of flame because you know, you've got all this jet fuel and these hot bits inside and the pumps keep pumping even if the engine stops and that fuel's got to do something, so it just burns. That's one of the problems you've got. So all the stuff that, you know, I mean, as it says in the instructions there, most of the national model flying bodies have banned the RC use of pulse jets. Now the people who have imposed that ban have, I bet you, I bet you any money you like, they've never flown an RC pulse jet, but they know all about it. They know enough to say, oh, it's too dangerous, we've got to ban it. <sighs> anyway, pulse jets, safe, use them properly, use them with some simple guidelines. Yeah, not, the worst you can do is burn your hand. And that means, you know, well, you can do that on your stove at home cooking your tea. So, yeah, um, a little bit, you know, caution is required, but treat them sensibly and, you know, you won't leave a trail of dead babies behind you. And that's really important. So what I'll be doing, uh, one of the things, of course, you've got this pulse jet, you spend a hundred bucks, it's a pretty bodgy well job, but it'll probably run. What are you going to put it on? What are you going to do with this Hobby King Pulse Jet? You can mount it on a bench, you can put some fuel in, you can start it up, it'll make a noise, it'll glow red hot, and if you leave it running for more than, you know, 10, 15 seconds, the reed valve will fail, it'll stop, and there you go, you've got $100 of junk. So there are things you've got to look at. What I'm going to do in upcoming videos, first of all, is what kind of model can we put these on? Because there are no models, you can't go out at the moment and say, oh, I want to buy a model ARF for a Pulse Jet. 
There are none. They don't make them because to date there haven't been any ready supply of engines. Hobby King are now supplying the engines, so maybe, maybe we'll see some airframes suited to just dropping a pulse jet on. I hope so. But if you're going to fly them RC, you're going to have to fly them outside the scope of your national model flying body's insurance policy and guidelines. And well, if you fly it safely, who gives a damn? The um, other thing, of course, is operating the engine. How do you actually fuel it up? What do you do? You know, because pulse jets have some rather interesting and sometimes annoying quirks. One thing is they don't suck. I mean, when it comes to drawing the fuel, the fuel head, the difference in height between the fuel and the metering valve is critical. The engine will run, you lower it by half an inch, the engine stops, starves, goes lean, stops. You raise it by half an inch, goes rich, and it stops. It's really sometimes that critical, which is why in my own engines I have a pressurized fuel system. Like in a nitro motor, we have a tap on the exhaust, which pressurizes the fuel tank, which gives you more consistent flow. I've done that with my own pulse jets. And once you get it sorted out and everything going as well, it works really well. But, you know, the, the Dynajet copy that they've got here doesn't have that. It requires a vacuum to suck the fuel. And so fuel head is very important. So we need models designed with that in mind. Also, the flames coming out the back of that thing, well, there's only a little bit of flame, but if, that, if you've got a foam tail sitting right behind the exhaust pipe, it's going to melt and fall off. So obviously the type of model, the design of the model, you want twin fins so the jet gases can go between the fins. Ideally, you don't want anything behind the engine. Then there's nothing to get you know, melted. So I'll be looking at that in a future video, showing you some of the models that I've converted to Pulse Jet, which include the Tame Cat, include the Long Easy, and include the Bobcat 52. Those are just three models I've converted to Pulse Jet, and they all fly really, really well. So I'll show you, you can, there's videos I've done on my x channel, I'll do some links. In the description, you'll find a whole bunch of links to those videos showing you how I've done this stuff in the past. I'll link to another very important video, and that's how to make your own reed valves, because you only get one spare reed valve, and I haven't seen any spares listed on the Hobby King website. And you will destroy your reed valves. It's a function. They're a consumable item in these engines. They slam backwards and forwards 260 times a second, and so it's naturally natural that they're going to fail. On one side, they've got red-hot combustion gases. On the other side, they've got a hard piece of aluminium that's anodized, so they get slammed, heated, slammed, heated. You know, it's like basically whacking them with a hammer. They fail, and sometimes they fail really quickly. Run it on the bench so it glows red hot, they'll fail in seconds. Put them in a model where you're flying around, yeah, they'll last minutes, but not hours. So you're gonna need a ready supply of these red valves. You may be able to buy them, hopefully Hobby King will stock them at a reasonable price, but if they don't, or if you can't wait, you can make your own. With some spring steel, you can get from a local, any company that makes springs will be able to provide you with a sheet of steel that you can then uh, mark out and etch up. And I've already done a video on that, and the link to that video is in the description. So yeah, heaps of stuff in the description to this video, stuff probably answered a lot of the questions you might already have, but if there are questions that aren't answered by that, then put your question in the comment section below. Now, Google, YouTube's really stuffing things around with YouTube, they're trying to turn it into Facebook and it really pees me off. So it's not so easy to use the comments, oh, it's, not, it's a pain in the backside, they're trying to force everyone to have a Google Plus account. I've already got a Google Plus account, and I've got YouTube channels. And I've got a Gmail account. There's no way to bring it all together without breaking stuff. Google, stop it. Stop it now. YouTube is a lovely, it's the world's most famous and the most popular file, uh, video sharing site. Don't try and make it into Facebook. It's, it's never going to be Facebook. Just stick to your knitting. Keep YouTube what it is because otherwise you'll turn the best file, video file sharing site in the world into the worst copy of Facebook in the world. Makes no sense to me. Anyway, that's by the by. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up so others will find it. Stay tuned. If you're not a subscriber, then subscribe now and you'll get to see the how to start these things up, how to run them, how to choose a model, how to put install the motor, and hopefully, if I can find a space somewhere, I'll show you how to fly the damn things. But as I say, I've flown them before. Check on my Xjet channel through the links in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again really soon, hopefully when my cold is better, on RC Model Reviews.